Hello, my fellow real estate geeks. Welcome to my February housing market update. And we're gonna go over some of the trends and things that are happening in the Phoenix metro area. I've got some other interesting things to talk about, so we'll get to it right now. So we're gonna jump into the numbers and these numbers probably shouldn't surprise you. They're not fantastic numbers, but again, shouldn't surprise you in our current market. If you're new here, welcome. Don't forget to click the little subscribe button right there. That really helps me out. And make sure you hit like for the YouTube algorithm. I'd really appreciate that too. So into the numbers we go. All these numbers are coming from the Arizona Regional Multiple Listing Service, the ARMLS. And these numbers are based on sales that happened in January. In January of 2022, we sold 7,115 homes. That is down from December, where we had 9,299 homes. So we had a little bit of a dip. Uh, very interesting though that sales were up in December. You would think with the holidays, people aren't out buying, but I tell you what, December was one of my busiest months <laughs> last year so so it was pretty hopping with January because of the sold listings were down this would probably be because inventory is low as we know and anything that sold in January would have probably been listed in December so we just didn't have a huge number of listings that happened in December that went into a sold status in January so that's kind of how that number would work. And if we compare that to January of 2021, which was 7,360 sold listings, that's kind of par for the course right now. Our median sales price for the month of January was $432,840. That is up from December, which was 425,000. And that's up quite a bit from January of 2021, which was 340,000. So that is a big, jump in median sales prices. Our average sales price was around 540,000, which is up from December where our average sales price was a little over 530,000. And of course that is a big jump from January of 2021 where we were at 443,000 as an average sales price. So let's just talk about the median and average sales price a little bit. We saw that last year in 2021, nationally that median sales prices went up approximately 15% nationally. In Arizona, we were one of the ones that had the biggest gain. Based on some numbers I've seen, our median price went up about 30% over the past year. So that's double the national value. So we went up quite a bit. I know that it is disheartening for people who are trying to buy homes in this market right now and especially first time buyers that are trying to get out there and buy their first home and the prices just keep going up and the wages are not going up as fast. And yes, that has been something that has been a broken record. Of <laughs> and yes, that's a bit of a broken record that I keep saying in some of my videos, it, it stinks. But, but we'll talk about some options that are coming up for first time buyers here in a little bit. In January, we had 8,937 new listings come on the market. That is up from the 6,990 listings that were new as in December. So that's going back to, because of the holidays, a lot of people just didn't wanna list their home in December and thought that, oh, January is a better time to do that. So a lot of new listings came on the market in January. Yay! New listings in January of 2021 was a little over 9,000. So we're a little less than a year before, but still pretty close based on this market right now. We had 8,764 listings in active status in January. That is down a little bit from about 9,500 in December, but that is up from 2021 with 8,337 in January 2021. We had 6,824 homes in pending status in January. Pending status is when a house is under contract. So not new, not active, under contract, about to be sold. That was up from the 5,449 
pending listings in December, again, because probably the holidays, people are ready to buy in January. So they were ready to put in a contract, but this is a big drop from the 9,157 pending listings we had in January, 2021. This is still an inventory situation though. Less houses in inventory, less houses to buy, less houses go under contract. Our average days on market went up a little bit. It is now 36 days. That is up from December's 34 days. So we are seeing an average day on market increase. And if you remember in the summer, we were down in the 20s, like 27 days was average day on market, which was insane. They were just flying off the shelves. So we're going back toward a longer average day on market. If you compare that to January, 2021, which was 44 days, we're kind of going back to that and getting closer to some normalcy there. Slightly. Slightly. Our absorption rate is still going back down, which I'm not very excited about because again, this goes back to inventory. So absorption rate is how many homes are on the market and how fast they sell. We're at 0.95 months of inventory. So if everything on the market right now sold and we didn't put any new houses back on, we would be out of homes in the whole Phoenix metro area in less than a month. I was having high hopes in December. We were at 1.03, so the absorption rate was going up a little bit, but it dipped back down. And it was 0.95 months of inventory in January of 2021 as well. So we're still on a very, very low inventory of very much a seller's market still. Our sold to list ratio is still dipping down a little bit right now. It is 99.8%. And what that means is people who are listing their homes are getting less than what they listed it for. So back in the summer, we were over 100%. We were, there were some points where it was like 103%, which meant you'd list a property for a certain amount and people were overbidding what the listing amount is. Some sellers were getting very optimistic and putting their listing prices accordingly. And the market is starting to balk. The, the, the buyers are starting to say, no, it's not worth that. It still has to appraise. There's only so much cash you can throw at it. You still have to be able to afford your home. So mortgage rates based on Mortgage News Daily, where I usually get this information just so it's consistent. As of February 8th, when I checked it, it was at 3.89% for a 30 year fixed loan on average. So a bunch of other things go into that, but on average, 3.89%. I think I spoke about this last month when it was 3.29% that interest rates are gonna go up and they were gonna go up to about 3.7 to four by the end of the year. And of this month, it's 3.89%. That's a huge jump in interest rates. So this is a national housing survey that they did on whether it was a good time to buy a home or not and what the confidence is of potential buyers. And they split it out on different age groups. And as you can see, it has dropped quite a bit recently. I know in one of the comments that someone asked me if, if it's a good time to buy. And with interest rates being as low as they were, even with the house prices going up, I was still recommending it's still a good time to buy if you can afford it, if it's the right thing for you, if, if, if it's a goal of yours and it's something that makes sense, it's still a good time to buy because those interest rates are record low interest rates and they've been that way for a long, long time. If you can get into a house, it's still a good time to buy. The interest rates will only go up, which means that you will have less buying power in the future. So when interest rates go up, it means you can afford less house. So if you can get into something now with this interest rate, it is better to do it now than later because the house prices have no showing that they're gonna drop anytime soon. All right, so here are some trends going on right now. Some of the numbers that I'm reading right now were kind of like, wow, that's kind of amazing. So I'm not saying it's happy news. It's just, I wanna inform you and educate you. So I wanted to share this little bit with you. So there was a study by the National Association of Realtors and they found that since the pandemic began, 
there are 400,000 less affordable homes for people earning a wage between 75,000 and 100,000 a year. That's one affordable house for every 65. Compare that to 2019 numbers where there was one affordable house for every 24 in this particular income segment, but it, it's pretty staggering. And I know that even some of my clients are feeling it, that it just seems like there's nothing out there that is affordable and we're still looking for solutions. NAR is trying to talk to lawmakers on things that can be done to help this shortage, which includes providing more funding for uh, affordable housing construction, expand and create tax incentives for distressed properties that can be converted into affordable housing, convert unused commercial space into affordable housing, an example here uh, in the Fiesta District, which is kind of central-ish Mesa, the Fiesta District's like Alma School and Southern. And if you guys are familiar with that area, the northwest corner used to have a lot of shopping and it had been empty parking lot for, I don't know, 10, 15 years, like a long time. <laughs> it's just been an empty parking lot. And so they're now just building some apartments in that area. Houses would be great, but you can see that there's apartments going up because they're just trying to make more affordable housing. But that is an example of using commercial space and rezoning it for residential so that we can find more homes for people. And speaking of zoning, also NAR is asking lawmakers to work on incentivizing zoning reform. So changing a lot of those commercial or just land that no one else is using into something that can be residential and ideally give incentives to developers to develop affordable housing since we do not need any more McMansions. So going back to other options of affordable homes, lately I have some clients that are on, you know, a, a tighter budget and we have been looking at manufactured homes and you think manufactured homes at least in the Phoenix area, are only for those 55 plus communities, but they're not. They're all over the place. And there are a lot of rules and regulations that go into manufactured homes, whether it's affixed to the land, if there's a land lease, there's all sorts of different things about these, but a lot of them are really, really nice. And you can make a nice first time home there while you're building equity to roll into something more substantial. And I've got, I've, since I've been working with so many manufactured homes lately, I've got a lot of information on it. I'm gonna do a separate video on it if you're interested and I will link it up here when that's done. So look for that, it'll be a quick video that just kind of talks about some of the breakdowns if you ever wanted to learn anything about manufactured homes. It's very interesting. The other thing we're seeing too is new construction. Last year, the national numbers were that 34% of all homes sold last year were new construction homes. That's how they're trying to fill the low inventory, right? Is build new ones. Arizona is around that same number. I think they're about 32, 33%. I think only Austin was the only one that kind of beat us out. So they're, the reason that we can do so many new construction homes and Texas is because we have the land to be able to build. California, we're showing like numbers like three or 4% new construction just because they just don't have the land in those metro areas to build out. So we're very fortunate that that is an opportunity. We just need more of them, more affordable ones. That would be great, yes. And I would love to do another video too um, on the state of new construction homes, because as you probably know from my channel is I tour a lot of new construction homes. I sell new construction homes and the rules have changed in less than a year because early last year, not a problem. Even in the pandemic, we were still selling new construction homes and they were closing on time. Now that is not the case. So we are seeing where there are delays of six, 12, 18 months from your close date. I have a client right now who was supposed to close in October and we're finally closing in February, but it has been a distressful experience because of the supply chain shortages and just things not moving. 
builders not anticipating the demand for the homes so therefore they're backlogged and trying to space out these buildings but there's there's so many crazy things going on in new construction homes right now so again probably another video i need to do so if i do that i'll link it here i mean supply chain issues like the builders can't get toilets and what are they doing they're buying them from home depot and lowe's if you can believe that oh goodness but speaking of home depot and lowe's this was also an article that popped up i thought was very interesting is the whole diy fad that the whole pandemic brought about we were stuck in homes and people were improving their homes well now they are spending more money and hiring actual professional tradespeople to do large-scale renovations a lot of this stems from the fact that people are using their dollars that they have for homes and they're buying older homes because it's what they can afford and renovating them and bringing them back to life a lot of the home improvement stores and lawn care products are just gonna have a really awesome spring because that is what's going on in renovation so i hope you found that interesting i love these topics i love being able to share them with you i want to hear your opinions so definitely drop in the comments tell me if you're doing some home improvements around your house tell me about some of the difficulties you're having finding your own home i'd love to help out you can always ask me questions my contact information is in the description below there's lots of ways you can contact me here email phone instagram wherever you want to find me i'm there to find i'm very easy to find if you can spell my name right especially you, you, you'll have a good time with that but again if if you like this information if you want to see more definitely remember to subscribe I love you guys for it and yeah are you guys finishing a book of boba fett yet because crazy as you can see i've got like some boba fett stuff going on here because woof, and that episode six oh my easter egg heart of all the fun things that were going on in that so let me know what you think of book of boba fett that'd be great too so let's talk about other geeky things we could talk about things like that all day it'd be fun but thanks for watching and until next time stay geeky my friends